welcome back to our family channel. Hello. Hi. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Are we having a fantastic day? It's all right. Yeah, all right. except I have to do a project. <laughs> yeah, Garen is struggling. He's got to do a project and he left it for the last minute as usual. As usual. Hockey <laughs> comes first and you're yeah. leaving your projects till mm -hmm. last, aren't you? Uh, it's a bit wet and windy, but it's warm. It's actually hot yeah, in here. It's actually really warm considering yeah. it's February. Yeah, so I'm, I'm enjoying the warmer weather, but I wish the rain and the wind would go away. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, today we are going to react to Danger's Gen X face. Yeah, we're going to show mm. Garen how it was when we were growing up. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited because I, th I think it was personally better. Yeah, I think it was better. Because you could go outdoors when it wasn't dangerous or anything. Yeah, we moved to Slovakia. One of the main reasons we, when we decided to move to Slovakia was to give the kids a bit more freedom, yeah. which they have, haven't they? Yes. So, like definitely. in the summertime, we hardly see them. It sounds horrible, but we're in a small village. We know where they are. They're always with their mates mm -hmm. and things. So, yeah. Yeah. But they I'm, come home when they're hungry. <laughs> or when the street lights come on, yeah. which is sort of what we did when we were kids. I just wish Garen could do a lot more than I did. I used to go fishing after school mm -hmm. and hunting yeah. with my pellet gun with my mates. and. See? I was about 10 or 9 when we used to go camp by the river on our own. So, yeah, oh. it was a bit weird. Anyway, so we're going to be checking that out. And don't forget to subscribe. That's right. If you grew up as Generation X, then it's probably a miracle you even survived. At least that's what the modern world tells us. Many of the things that were normal back then are now taboo. taboo. In this video, we will have a look back and wonder how Gen X kids even survived. Television wasn't everything, but it was still pretty important. <laughs> Did you have one of those? <laughs> we had a bigger one. We had one like that, black and white, and like it's you'd have to pop. like bash it and move the, you know, the air, those things they called the aerial. You have yeah. to move it to get the picture going. Yeah, Good. I was always getting really angry if we were somewhere with my mum and dad, and we were running late, and some show was coming on because by the time oh, the yeah. TV actually came on yeah it, heated up heated up it took like 20 minutes you don't understand we didn't have internet we couldn't record anything whoa in the 70s then you probably did not even have cable smart. most people relied on a television antenna Bunny which was ears. usually rabbit ears and tin foil mm -hmm. however there <laughs> were some households that used an antenna that was mounted on top of the roof Every so often, this antenna would need to be adjusted yeah. thanks I'm to some Sorry to pause or... again. Again, Granddad would try to watch rugby or something, and if a bird landed on there or something and knocked the picture, he'd be like, John Boy, get up on the roof, and I'd have to move the aerial, and he'd open the window and shout to me when it was all right. The weather. This became a family affair. Dad, of course, was in charge of the picture, so he was right in front of the television. See? One of the kids would be up on top of the roof me, and ready to receive me. instructions from the relay of the rest of the family spread out from dad. No one ever thought anything about kids being on the roof and then falling off. Most kids got up there anyways just to get a better view of the neighborhood or the stars. Lucky. Many newer roofs are much more steep and that might be considered child abuse to send your kid up there. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that people don't have to deal with antennas on the roof. Summers as a kid were always fun, and why wouldn't it be? You were out of school, and that meant you could spend more time with your friends. But with all that running around outside, you were bound to get thirsty. There's nothing quicker and more refreshing than a sip from the garden hose. I still do that. Yeah. Of you course, that. you had to let it run a while before it got cool enough to drink. I was just going to say, you distinct... tried that in South Africa, and if you did it straight away, you'll burn your face because it gets really hot because the hose is lying oh. in the grass. But, but it had the rubber it mm -hmm. it from the hot I yeah. didn't mind no, it. I always used to drink out those pop. I still do if we're in the back garden here and I'm doing something. Deep taste. When is the last time that you've seen a kid do this? It's supposed to be awesome. unhealthy, yet here we are. But occasionally I still take a sip from the garden hose. Me too, bro. The garden hose was also connected to a couple other activities that parents today may consider them to be too dangerous. The first one oh, was the slip slide. and slide. The older editions of the slip and slide were a little bit more dangerous, them, and some kids broke bones or chipped teeth on these, but just about everyone you slid go off the stone. end or over the side and got a grass or rock burn. Believe it or not, they still sell these, but yeah. they are a little bit safer. This next item, however, I'm not so sure about. As kids, we all enjoyed playing in the water sprinkler, but some of these sprinklers could be pretty rough. 
This we one had in one particular like was really dangerous. It had a solid steel base that could certainly hurt if you stubbed a toe on it or fell on it, we but had that one wasn't like that. the dangerous part. When the water ran through the sprinkler, it would move the metal fan blade at the top. At that point, it was oh. like a little saw just... blade that was spinning fast on top, and it could cut through little water-soaked toes and feet. I don't, well, hold Kids on, I don't fast think it learners, cut but... you. I never got cut by it. We never had those. No? Mm -mm. And we had the other ones that would go like... <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty cool. Oh. If they got cut once, they would be sure to clear it the next time. Up the side, mm -hmm. it gets the Kids in our day used to be outside a lot, and we loved Black it. Ball, no? That yeah, worked out great because hot most hot of hot our hot parents hot. really didn't want us inside the house, anyways. Mm -hmm. As a result, kids spent a lot of time out in the sun. And sunblock? We had no idea what that was. Yeah. Are you talking about a hat or a shade tree? At most, we may have depended on SPF 4, and that's only if we were super cautious. I can't remember my mum ever putting sunscreen on me when I was a kid. No. It like no, just never. wasn't a thing. I was putting like this oil thing so I get a nice turn. You got brown like a turkey. Yeah. <laughs> like oil. Everyone was exposed to the sun and many of us would compare sunburns at the end of the day. Yeah, like you show your... When our skin started spots. peeling, we would see who could peel off the biggest flake. Oh look, that one looks like Texas. <laughs> It also wasn't uncommon to see teen girls and young women laying out and trying to get that golden beach tan. Quite often, they would speed up this process by using either coconut oil or tanning oil. Today, most kids get lathered up with anything from 30 SPF to 100 SPF. Yeah, but I still get a proper tan. Parents in those days certainly didn't have to watch us like the parents do today. They not only trusted us, but they also trusted our friends and the rest of the community. Parents realized that we needed to do things on our own, and that was how we were going to learn. However, that is so true. Uh -huh. We would be like, go, go to Auntie Diane's house and get some sugar or something, and Auntie Diane, you'd think, oh, it's just down the road. No, it's freaking miles away. Yeah. And, like, it was always safe. Yeah, but like, for example, yeah, my mom, she used to work night shift because she was a nurse. Oh, and, yeah. uh, like, of they got divorced and all that so we were living with with my mom and uh, when she went for a night shift we were still outside and she told us when it gets dark you go home hmm. and we stayed we went home we stayed all night on our own no problem she, she trusted us so yeah. much we were so responsible like yeah. uh, we're we lucky with our kids though they're very responsible yeah. I think like they know not to like even from young yeah. they don't they've never we've never had kids that touched plug like plug holes or do silly stuff when we're not home yeah like but i we... think that's what it is isn't it like now we baby kids mm -hmm. and uh, they don't know what is it to be responsible cat always used to wind me up if garen or leia fell when they were a baby she'd be like <gasps> and i'd be like no because <laughs> when you're quiet and you don't make a scene they never cried yeah. like ever it's when you make a scene like when they like garen would fall when i'd be with him he'd fall over he'd graze his knee he'd get up he'd dust himself off and crack on yeah. It's like you, you, you make quite a big deal of it. Yeah. They were watching yeah, and we happened nice. to get yeah. hurt. There was no doubt that they were going to be laughing as long as it wasn't life-threatening. <laughs> Bikes were everything to a Gen X kid oh, and they provided us a right. freedom that we couldn't get from anything else. Except that my chain we could go on adventures that were hours <laughs> away from home and for the most part our parents had no idea where we were at. We also used our bikes to jump that? some pretty shady ramps. Yeah, I'll tell you what, when it was summer holidays, me and my friends, we were constantly on our bikes. Mm. We would bike for two hours to go to the lake to have a swim and then bike back. We <laughs> we're <here>. laughing, because <laughs> we're we're laughing because Kat tells a story every time we're driving there. She's like, we used to ride here on our bikes when we were kids. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like they won't be able no, to do that now no. because there's so much traffic. Yeah, and they drive like maniacs. Like, I, would hate, I wouldn't even ride on that road you know, with a bicycle. But we were so safe mm -hmm. then. Yeah, because there's horses and cars. <laughs> we could do a lot with some plywood and bricks and it was hours of entertainment. Yeah. As we look back on our look childhoods and like compare yours. it to modern kids, it's hard to believe that we did all those bike adventures with no helmet or knee pads. This picture pretty well sums up the generation. This kid is jumping his bike off of a super tall ramp. 
Notice that he has no helmet, knee pads, or elbow pads. And he's in Just pure fun adventure. Mm -hmm. If this evil Knievel lands short, then the kid on the end is in trouble. And occasionally that did that happen. Mm -hmm. As you look at the kids on the know, side, you can tell like that they are worried like about it. this because they've seen it happen themselves. But the best the part about this watching. photo is there's a dad sitting on the front steps and he's smoking a cigarette while he's waiting to see who gets Boys hurt first. Kids will be kids. For him, this is as good as any gong show on oh. television. <laughs> Back in those days, cigarette smoke was everywhere, and mm -hmm. you couldn't avoid secondhand smoke if you wanted to. Yeah. In fact, in most of us had everything. at least one parent that smoked. Parents would send their kids into convenience stores <laughs> to purchase cigarettes while they waited out in the car. Really? Yeah, Usually, Nana, the clerk Nana would, would just send me because the shops would be quite far. She'd be like, "Can you go get me some bread, milk, and just tell what was her name? Oh, Auntie Cookie. Tell Auntie Cookie." Um, can you get me a couple boxes of cigarettes and I'll pay her tomorrow? And that's how it was. Like, we'd always go. Yeah, get... I used to go. It's my crazy. To get cigarettes from crazy. Mama. Look out and get a nod from the parent, which would signal that it was okay to buy the cigarettes. <laughs> if the parents were not around, then the kid probably needed a note from the parents saying that it was okay to buy the cigarettes. Nope. These notes were never all that official, and it might be written on a notepad, scratch of paper, or the back of a receipt. Mm. Dear clerk, please sell Rhett a carton of cigarettes. Thanks, Mom. Can you believe that actually worked? There's no chance that kids could ever do that today. No. When I've seen those notes, that's how I used to go shopping when I was probably five, six years old. <laughs> With the list. Yeah, my mom would just write down on the list and I would just give it to the lady at the shop. And she would just pick it and I would pay and Simple go home. And she would give me cigarettes as well. Yeah, and the thing is, I was going to say as well, we would never steal the cigarettes or try it because everyone in the community knew each other. Yeah. So, like, if if they were like, oh, Jonah came into the shop today to get some cigarettes and it wasn't for my mom, I would get the harding of my life, like a proper smack. Because yeah. they know, like, everyone knew each other. Car safety was something else that most mm -hmm. people didn't take too seriously. Never had a car seat. In the U.S., it became mandatory that oh, every God, car manufactured it. after 1968 yeah, had to have seatbelts installed in them. What? Yeah. But and wearing the back them of the was more of a recommendation rather than a requirement until the mid-1980s. Until then, we oh, stood yeah. up on the front seat so that we could see up over the dash, and our dad's arm was our seatbelt and the airbag. <laughs> Another thing that we would do is lay up on the back dash and pick our noses as we looked at the cop car behind us. <laughs> we thought it was oh. super fun when Dad had a slam on the brakes and we came flying out of that back window and slammed into the back of the front seat. Back then, we had to learn how to take a fall, and the crazy thing about it is we couldn't wait to get back up there and try it again. Mm -hmm. Hold on for dear love. Lucky. Pickup yeah, trucks were not as common as what you see today, and people that had... I used to go on the motorway like that, on the back of the... We never the back had a pickup truck pick at those truck. times in Slovakia. Boats so would haul them with regular cars, even Cadillacs. And when Dad needed lumber, it was going on the roof of the car so that it could come home. <sighs> he would tie it down a little, but it was still our job to help hold the lumber down as it was stacked on the roof. So there we were, standing up on the seat, halfway out the window, clinging to the lumber on top, while Dad had his hand on our oh, waistband Dad, to keep us from falling out. Somehow his other hand was busy holding down the lumber on his side, which is pretty incredible to think about. <laughs> At the same time, he was also steering the car, shifting gears, and smoking a cigarette. Yep. It's no wonder that we thought he could do anything. Remember some of the other activities we did? We all had toys that are considered dangerous now, but back then it was completely <laughs> normal. And also... Lawn darts was one of those toys. That weighted sharp point could penetrate anything if you didn't These get the heck banned. out of the way. I remember someone saying they were banned. They it was like a massive shot, dart that you'd throw and it would go into the ground, but they would like people get them in their foot and stuff. Ooh. Clackers, click clacks, or knockers had the possibility of shattering and sending shards of plastic flying through the air like shrapnel. Yet somehow, some of these clackers survived. Okay, no, Back stick, here though. is my pair from the 70s. Huh. Yeah, then you do Back that. then, we learned how to entertain ourselves with the simplest of things. Do you remember making long oh. chains from soda and beer yes. can pull tabs? Chains? 
That's a According cat. to what they say today, we could have been badly cut at any moment, yet most of us had minor cuts, if any. But one huh? dangerous activity that we all did was kite fighting. Remember this one? You would fasten razor blades to the side of your kite and then swoop oh God, it down so that, that you could cut the string of your friend's kite. <laughs> if you were successful, that. then that kite would keep flying forever. But if your kite took a nosedive to the ground, then you better be quick and get out of the way of those razor blades. <laughs> BB guns were another item that yeah. was quite common. I had one of those. Kids could go all over town with one on the front of their handlebars, and the BB wars would certainly get intense. Back then, we definitely did not have safety at the top of our list nope. when those broke out. Huh. Firecrackers were certainly a lot more accessible than they are Tom today. To it seemed yeah, like you could pop them off in every city, and it was perfectly legal. Did you ever set off some fireworks and then place them into your Tonka truck and roll it into the driveway where some neighborhood girls were playing jacks so that you could get their attention? No? Well, I guess that was just me then. Speaking of jacks, they were definitely yeah, something painful to step on if you were barefoot. Any parent today that complains about a Lego being stepped on has probably never really stepped on a jacks. These things would Jackson completely Ford. hide in the shag carpet, and they were like little soldiers that were waiting to ambush you. Oh. Stand on that thing. With all that time oh, you spent on the bicycle, bastards. then I'm sure... When they hit your shin. Oh, that was so... Oh, sure that you probably bittles. came in contact with at least one of these. One slip of the foot, and this pedal could travel up your leg like a vegetable peeler. Kids today know nothing about that level of pain. Here is something else that could be really painful. These chairs were really comfortable to lay in, but when you got up, you had lines going all across your skin. But that hey, wasn't the worst part. Nine. They were not the easiest to adjust. You had to bend them all the way in so that you could adjust them further out. One wrong move and the hinges of these torture devices could snap down on you like a bear trap and <laughs> take off a chunk of skin. Oh. Are these yeah, chairs even sold today? Despite all the dangers that were lurking all around us, it really was a special time to grow up in. People were friendly and neighbors were someone that you could count on. Yeah, you could Some of the to dangers them. that we see today are completely different than what we faced. Mm -hmm. Do you have any special memories that you would like to share? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know. Oh, what uh, a video, isn't yeah, it? It takes, you, down, it takes yeah. you on a trip down memory lane, doesn't it? I really, like, I don't think our kids have got it too restricted. I think we've always been pretty, not lenient, but like we sort of let them grow up and do their yeah. own thing. Are there some things that like I used to do that I wouldn't like? We don't let them go too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I like, like yeah. that day you went walk about to the lake and that, and Jesus, I was panicking that day. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, we we quite lenient yeah. with them. Yeah, but it was it was fun times, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Like no I don't internet. know if the, if kids would survive no. now with that TV and no internet. If I didn't know in the future that there was going to be phones and yeah, Wi-Fi and stuff, yeah. then definitely. Yeah, but it's different. Imagine you wake up tomorrow and we just go right. We're back to like that. You and Leia would freak out. How's Leia going to play her music when she's in the shower or in the bath? Or how are you going to sit in your place? You don't have PlayStation. <laughs> No phones, no internet. Oh, it was awesome. It Maybe. was awesome. Hey? Maybe. I think you would struggle, mate. Yeah, you learn to do the fun stuff. Yeah, like we'd the... always, we would never be bored, really. If no, you... we would always be out doing and stuff. And if you like ever playing. said to your mum you're bored, go out and do something then. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to go find a mate to play with or yeah. build a tree house or something. It was good times, man. Good times. Anyway, let us know what your uh, memories are. I wasn't quite Gen X. I was 1986, but I grew up in South Africa, so we didn't have a lot of technology. Or so I lived basically yeah, it's like, like that. Gen X. So. Yeah, yeah, it was great though. I loved it, and I wouldn't change it to be honest with you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and we will see you hopefully with Leia tomorrow. Bye. Bye.